Now I want to turn it over to our wonderful panel. So as you can see up here up front, we have a couple of familiar faces. You all have seen Allison many times, and Michelle is going to be helping me facilitate the panel. Um, but we do have three guests who were gracious enough to spend part of their evening here uh, talking a little bit about their experiences abroad, but especially focusing on maybe some challenges that they encountered, what strategies they used to overcome them, and things like that. And I do want to stress that obviously we don't have someone up here for every single one of the countries you're all going to. So I do hope that you'll see that a lot of the strategies that they're going to be talking about really would be transferable to many, if not all, of the countries that you're going to. And after our panel today, we're going to aim to end the panel around 7.35ish. We'll see how the discussion and questions go. Um, but we'll aim to end around then, and then we'll actually have um, another guest joining us. And she's actually a, a South Korean international student. Um, and she, along with our, our panelists up here, will lead little breakout groups that will be a little bit more specific to the area or region that you're going to, um, and they'll, they'll guide, guide you through really informal discussion on various aspects of cultural differences that you might encounter uh, while interning or volunteering abroad. So that's our basic plan for today, and um, yeah, so Michelle and I will be facilitating the conversation, and then there will be time for questions afterwards. So I guess the first thing that I would like our wonderful panelists to do is if you guys could just introduce yourselves, like what year you are, what you study, and give us an overview of um, the type of internship or volunteer abroad experiences you had. Hi, I'm Allison. I think you guys all know that. But um, I'm a junior and I interned in Spain last summer. So I'll be talking about that today. Um, I'm Nyla, I'm also a junior. Um, and I went to Nicaragua for a month a couple summers ago, and so I'll be talking about that. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Lindsay. Um, I'm a first year student in the School of Social Work Masters. Um, and I spent a year after I graduated um, doing an internship in India with a human rights um, organization. Uh, I'm Ryan. I'm a master's of engineering student right now. Um, after I finished my undergrad, I did a one-year study abroad, study and work abroad in Germany with a six-month internship at Mercedes-Benz. And then for about the past year and a half, I was working in Germany and Ireland. Great. So we have some diverse experience. <coughs> Would you like to go first? Yeah, absolutely. So the first question is, how did you set goals and expectations and manage them for the duration of your time abroad? Anyone can start. Um, I'll go first. Um, <laughs> beforehand, well, since I went through cultural visas, as I think I've told you guys, um, we had to like do a goals sheet and stuff. So we had to like write out what we wanted to get out of our um, internship and <coughs> what we thought was it was going to be like. Um, so that was, I think that's really important to like identify what you think you're getting into at least in the beginning and what you do want to get out of it, and then. Um, I had to meet with someone from Cultural Visas halfway through the trip and like kind of talk with her um, and tell her how I was going and what I thought was going well. Um, and I also like kept a blog, which uh, all of them, the mm -hmm. person participants are supposed to do. And I think that's really helpful just to keep track of like what you're thinking and as a way of like reflection. Um, so I think that was really important. So. Um, for me, before we went on the trip, uh, the group that I was going with, we had delegation meetings and workshops, um, I think every other week or so, um, where we would learn about the history of the country or just learn about kind of what expectations we should kind of have going in. And then during those, we would set kind of goals about what we wanted to do, um, what we wanted to get out of the trip, what we wanted to accomplish while we were there. And then while we were there, every night we had a reflection where we would come together and talk about the day talk about how things were going, talk about what we wanted to improve, or um, kind of look at it, keep track, like keep ourselves on track to make sure those goals were actually happening. Okay. Um, I would say, so I was, um, I had a year-long internship, so I was interning with an international NGO. Um, and I would say I was doing an administrative internship while I was there, and I didn't really have a good view coming in what I was going to be responsible for. So when I got there, 
I found out it was going to be HR, um, general administrative processes, and being an IT guru in my office, which I really didn't have a lot of IT skills. So um, I think for me coming in, what was really important was to really connect with my supervisor right away and um, really invest in the training for what my responsibility, what the first things I needed to get out of the way, what the major components of my job were that I could kind of become an expert on, and um, kind of not letting maybe expectations from different departments. So when I got calls, oh, you need to come fix my computer right this second, um, to not let that um, really make me, to not take that the wrong way and feel like I was not, you know, competent at my job. So I think just really working with your supervisor right off the bat to kind of be honest about where where you are, really um, set having them kind of set the um, hard skills that you need to knock out first is really helpful, um, especially when you're going in with maybe not a lot of like previous work experience. Um, my advice to this is just kind of to limit your preconceived notions. A lot of times you can read a lot and study a lot about where you're going and what you're going to do, but until you get there you really have no idea what's going to happen. Um, and a lot of times that just leads to disappointment in the first few weeks where you feel like you're kind of wasting your time a little bit. Um, the best idea is to really go in there with a clean slate and wait until you sit down with your manager or your boss for the first week and really understand what you're going to be doing. Um, and then I guess in preparation beforehand what you can really focus on is personal growth goals. So what you have is a goal for yourself regardless of what your specific tasks in the internship may be. Uh, focus on what you want to get most out of it regardless of what your job uh, will actually be. One, one thing that we've sometimes heard from students doing internships in various countries um, is, you know, we'd get an email like, oh man, my, my internship is really unstructured, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to be doing, um, you know, how should I handle this situation? So, and, and, and that's not really specific to one cultural context. I think we've heard that from students who are in, you know, France and Turkey, all over the place. And um, we know that other folks who are running internship programs on campus have encountered questions like that too. So now I, I guess I'd like the panel, and some of you have already kind of touched on this, but if your internship or volunteer experience was in some way unstructured, how did you handle that? How did you approach your work, your supervisor, things like that? Um, well, for me, those daily reflections really helped with that because if you were struggling with anything, you could not only talk to everyone else that you were on the trip with, but also our supervisors, and that was really helpful. Um, and then just always having a mindset of being flexible is, I think, something that you absolutely have to have. Like, nothing is going to always go exactly how you're planning it to go, ever, <laughs> and um, you just always have to be flexible and just make sure that you're able to do that. I would definitely agree with Nyla. I think that <clears throat> learning to like go with the flow and that it's not going to go how you probably expect. And um, like he said about kind of having a clean slate and, a, and an open mind. Um, and kind of what helped me was like reminding myself why I was there and that maybe I couldn't like help them as much as I wanted to because I just didn't have the skills to or they had other people to do the things that they needed to do, but like that I was still getting something out of it and tried to be positive and talking, I did like get to talk to, with my supervisor in the beginning and just being clear about like asking what you, what they expect of you and what they want you to do um, is helpful. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I'd say my um, experience, it wasn't so much that it was unstructured, it was just very fast paced, so priorities changed like that in my office and so that could kind of flexibility was really key because um, you had to be flexible and shifting your attention from something that was really important to something that had higher importance um, and I think like one thing that helped me get through that especially when I had a lot of things that I needed to get done was just um, being and my supervisor really, we had the, we shared the same office, but she was never there. So it became really critical for me to um, write updates um, with just basically all the all the progress I had made, all the things that had kind of interfered with, um, or the additional questions I needed to do to accomplish a task, and um, where I needed her help. And I found that that really helped us 
move things quicker because she could usually just send an email response like, hey, you actually need to focus on this first and don't worry about this and I'll do this for you. So it just really helped. Um, and that might be specific to my office environment, but um, I found that really helpful for me. I think at the very, very beginning, the best thing to do is go in and flat out ask what their expect expectations for you are. Um, I had this situation where I had one supervisor for the first three months. We got along well. He had actually worked in Detroit, so we kind of understood the cultural differences, and uh, it took away a lot of the, the stress. Um, but then halfway through, he was transferred, and I had a new supervisor for the last three months. I couldn't understand what he was saying, and it was just very difficult. So it was, I kind of had to go back to square one and make sure he had the same expectations for me, um, making sure that it was very open. And if you're working in a different language, always ask the questions twice. It's, I got into the habit of just kind of nodding and saying, okay, okay, I know what you're saying, when I had absolutely no idea. And then I have to go back two or three days later to ask the same question again. So it's better just to admit up front, if you aren't sure, ask again, and just make sure it's clear from the very beginning. How many of you will be working in another language? Oh. A lot of you. All right, cool, so that's really good advice. And I think another really important thing to, to pull from this is that I think all of you basically said that you kind of have to be comfortable with ambiguity and kind of go in with no expectations and be flexible. And those are some of the greatest skills that you gain from, from global work. Like those are the types of skills that you can talk to employers about and, and write about in cover letters and things like that. So just wanted to kind of highlight that, um, you know, even though these, these folks were all over the world, their, their message is actually pretty consistent. So. Yeah, I think a major theme is this idea that like you come in with certain ideas and expectations and they, that definitely can be turned on its head, right? Mm -hmm. So I think this next question kind of um, relates to that in terms of like what were you most surprised by and what was the most difficult for you to adjust to in terms of your experience in your work and your job and uh, how did you deal with it? Sorry, I don't want to stare at you. I don't. I guess I'll start this one then. Um, what I was most surprised by is when I did my internship in Germany, um, their education system is set up so that an internship is basically required if one, if not two internships during the process. So I had done an internship here in the U.S. where it's kind of, uh, they hire interns because they want to just basically test people out and give them a full-time offer afterwards. Where in Germany, they looked at interns as just you know, help for six months. So it was a little bit different viewpoint of, in the U.S., they were really looking to build a relationship and hopefully give you an offer at the end of the summer, where in Germany it was kind of just, uh, you know, they knew people were coming in for three to six months and shifts, basically get all the work you could out of them and then push them out the door. Um, so that was kind of difficult for me to understand at first, and also the amount of responsibility that I was taking on, because it was just they expected to be a short-term short -term help. Um, the responsibility level was kept kind of low. So from that, I really had to work hard at the very beginning to show what I could do and try to take on more responsibility and kind of adjust to their mentality of how it was going to be and then try to pick up a little more as time went on. Um, yeah, I would say a lot of things surprised me about my internship experience. Um, I think... We were in India, where are you? I'm sorry. But I was, yeah, I don't know if I specified. I was in Mumbai. Um, and. I think mine was uh, actually how much responsibility like was interested to me, and um, it, I think the internships because they were a year long, um, and, I, and it's constant. I mean, they're always bringing in interns to fill these roles, so it really is like its own job. Um, and I think what really surprised me, like once I was there, was just how um, how like the high expectations I had, but also just how I kind of was constantly, um, at least initially, making it to feel like I was inadequate. And I feel like that was a really big struggle for me um, the first month because I didn't really know if I should be there. I really didn't know if I had the skills to offer. Um, the other interns you know, were a lot older than me and had experience in their specialized fields. Um, so I would just say to counter that, like what really helped me if you're ever feeling like that when you're doing international work, because I'm sure in some way you might feel like at some point feel like that, is to um, really just remind yourself that it's a learning experience and just 
once you have that mentality of like, I'm a learner and I just really want, you know, I really want you to teach me, it really just changes the focus and like takes the pressure off. And that really helped me because I think the first month I just was constantly doubting like that I should be there. And then once I kind of got through that little hurdle, um, I was just amazed by how much I actually did learn, how much I did accomplish while I was there. Because um, a year is still kind of a short time period, so. Um, for me, my uh, the most difficult part was the language barrier. I'm not fluent in Spanish, but um, everyone that we were working with only pretty much spoke Spanish. And um, even we stayed with homestay families. My house mom and my sister did not speak any English, and so just trying to like ask them a simple question sometimes I was stuck and I didn't know what to do and so um, I mean that helped my Spanish a lot but obviously at first I was really struggling and so um, I just utilized the other people in my group I mean Allison was there with me and she spoke a lot better Spanish than I did um, and so just kind of asking for clarification asking over and over and just trying to do like hand gestures until you get it and um, but really trying though to communicate is really important because if I would have just kind of given up and then not communicated with them at all I wouldn't have learned any more Spanish and I wouldn't have progressed at all and then I wouldn't have been able to form relationships with anyone there either so um, I would say that for my for my experience um, <clears throat> it was being unstructured um, as we've talked about but mine was very unstructured and I was not used to that and like coming from school and having something to do all the time and a huge to-do list and all this stuff was hard to go to a very relaxed like work environment and um, I kind of had to prove to them also that I could um, do what they asked me to do because like in the beginning they wanted to, me to do translations but they thought it'd be too hard for me to do English to Spanish they would just give me Spanish to English so once like they started letting me do it and like I could show them that I did it um, that helped them to give me more, but it was just hard to sometimes like have not that much to do. Um, but I think again, it's the mentality of like being there and knowing that you're learning and like your learning skills like is being flexible. And I think like Kelly said, like that's a skill that you can take away. Not like oh, I learned how to translate things better, but I learned how to like deal with this new work environment and um, just like learning how to adapt to something that you're not used to. I have kind of a follow-up question, and you can choose not to answer this if you wish, but was there a, a certain like cultural difference in the workplace that really surprised you? Something that kind of stands out? Um, I guess I wasn't really surprised once I got there because they did warn us. I could warn us, I mean not really. Prepared but they right did, now. yeah, prepared. <laughs> I guess that's for it. Um, it's, um, I mean, for me, it was like like we were working in a school and in a clinic, and um, I mean here those are also professional places. But I think you had to be a lot more professional, I think, than I thought you might. I mean, like even we did like an after school program, and um, and I mean for me, that's just like oh, you get to hang out with the kids and like play around, you know. But we had very structured plans every day that we made ourselves. But we like had to have plans, and um, generally they did not go the way that we had planned them, but at least we had those going in, and that was, I guess, a little bit more surprising for me. Um, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if that actually answered your question. Know, but <laughs> Anyone else? I think so. Um, I would say that, um, I don't know, I feel like when I've had previous positions, like, I've always kept you know, professionalism and like not really necessarily, I mean, I guess in um, student jobs I have, but in India it's really, like your workplace is kind of like extended family and I, um, you know, there's an hour lunch break every day where everyone is like sitting around a desk sharing each other's food and like I, um, that was really important for me to take part in and a lot of other interns didn't do that but if you are in a culture that really values you know coming together and food I really encourage you to do that because um, that really changed the whole, the whole my whole experience because not only did I make those relationships but um, 
just kind of really started to value that like myself and so um, I would just really encourage you to do that if that's appropriate in the culture you're going to. Anyone else want to add anything to that? For me, just in Germany, the stereotypes are true. Everything's very structured and organized, and so minor tasks were never just somebody would say, hey, can you do this for me? There would be an email or something official so they could go back and say, that I asked you to do this at this time on this day, and you agreed that it would be done. And so it was just a lot different from what I was used to. It took away a lot of the responsibility, and it was just everything was written down and accounted for. And that also kind of carried over to the social aspect of working, because even at lunch and you really separated the people you hung out with and the people you worked with. And at work, conversations never strayed from the weather, sports, or vacation plans. You never talked about you know, how you were feeling that day or you know, what was going on in your family. It was just very high-level topics and nothing uh, more personal. What about Ireland? Exact opposite. <laughs> I, sit down, I sat down one day in a meeting, and uh, everyone kind of left. And then the owner of the company was just kind of asking me how I, was, how I was enjoying my time in Ireland. Within five minutes, he was giving me recommendations for where to go on vacation, where I should eat. You know, just, just sat there for 30 minutes giving me ideas of what I should do while I was in Ireland. And it was the complete 180 from what I experienced in Germany. One other thing that I've heard from people who have been in, in France, um, actually I would think it was in the context of this workshop, is like the importance of when you arrive at the workplace, walking to all of your colleagues' offices and greeting them in the morning. And if you don't do that, uh, apparently it could potentially be offensive or people might take it the wrong way. So these are the kind of interesting like, cultural differences that you might not realize unless you maybe talk to someone who's had an experience similar to the one that you're about to have or really kind of read up on it. But you also, I guess, learn by experience. But do you have anything else to add? Yeah, just the same in Spain. It was very laid back and we would have a coffee break for like half an hour to an hour, like at most days of the week. And I there was two other interns, Spanish interns in my department, and then three other interns in the like law department, but we'd all have a coffee break together, and we would just chat, and they would all like ask me about how I was enjoying Spain, and give me recommendations. Even my boss like would be like, oh, did you do this, or like, have you done this yet? Or if you need to like get coffee and just chat, like, I'm free. Um, and it, it was really great to like get to know them in that way, and they really like cared about what I was doing. And, we would, and we kind of did that too, like everyone would say good morning to everyone. Like when I walked in, I would go into the other interns' room and like say good morning and like ask them how their day was going before I went to my desk. So we did that also. Mm -hmm. um, I guess our next question, I, I, as for, for this question, I'd like you all to think of maybe a specific or particular instance in which you felt kind of uncomfortable or kind of stressed out um, while you were volunteering or interning abroad. Um, and if you wouldn't mind kind of sharing a little bit about the circumstance and um, how, how you dealt with it. So, story time. Um, I can go. I, I have two like very kind of small ones. Um, I had to make copies every day of like newspaper articles and um, about like refugees and immigration and usually the other interns helped me do it because like they would just, we would just do it together because it was faster and they weren't there that day and so my boss um, had like marked one of the papers and she wanted me to copy it in, with all the other ones and I like lost the marking on it and I was like oh it's probably this one so I copied it and then I like did not think she would like look through it and she looked through it and she was like that's the wrong one why didn't you do that like why did you do that one I was like uh I lost the thing, like I didn't remember which article, and she was like, oh, you should have just asked me, like, why didn't you just ask? And I was like, I don't know, you're right, why didn't I ask? So, like, I guess from that I learned, like, I was kind of, like, timid at first, and um, I learned that I could, um, like, really, she was willing to help me, and she wanted me to know that, like, that was okay, and, like, if I did, if I was confused, just to clarify, because, like he said, also, I would kind of, like, nod my head in the meeting, like, yeah, yeah, I understand, and I wouldn't, and I'd have to go ask the other interns. Um, and another time I had to talk to like the director of the whole thing, like not just my boss. And so um, I like had, had one of the inter other interns like help me type up my email <coughs> to her and um, she like really helped me because I was like really nervous about it. But so like utilizing other people in the office if like, like they're willing to help you was like really useful to me because they helped me 
when I had to like talk to my boss and stuff in the beginning when I was nervous about it. So. So one of my stressful situations, I guess, was in the same kids club that I was talking about before. Um, and it was raining that day, so pretty much anything that was outside, we couldn't really do. Um, and so we had one of the, because they all had stations, kind of, and we did themed days. And um, so I don't even remember what the theme was for the day, but it was raining, and so we couldn't do a couple of our activities. Um, but one of our activities was doing karaoke, which we could do under the thing, under the roof, and it was no big deal. So we were like, okay, we'll just do a lot of karaoke, a lot of dancing, you know, they love that. But then, um, none of the songs would load on any of the computers or anything, so we couldn't actually do karaoke. And so we were all pretty frustrated, like everything we've planned is not going to happen, including this karaoke, which we thought was maybe going to be like, like the lifesaver today um, and so again I guess this is just going along with being flexible and just like being creative and ways to fix situations I think what we ended up doing was just having them pick a song one of the kids just pick a song and then just sing it like they would just start singing it and dancing and like we hopefully know it but we usually didn't and then um, I mean, it ended up being pretty unstructured and they just kind of did whatever they wanted, but at least they were still like having fun because we couldn't go outside and like you just have to kind of go with the flow and I think that's, I mean, we all touched on that earlier, that's just like really, really important. Um, this was kind of hard for me, but I can think of like one thing that happens like every month. I there, I had weird there. I had to um, because I was an admin intern. I was dealing with staff at all levels in the office, and so you know I was very much corresponding all the time with all the directors of departments, trying to get things from them, which could be stressful because they're very busy and I'm an intern. Um, and there was one particular director that was just every month I needed something and it just would never, I would never get it when I needed to get it. And um, so at first I was very timid about that because, I don't know, I, I don't really like confronting, especially people who are, I perceive superior to me. And, you know, so I would email, still like not get a response. and. Um, so over the course of time, month by month, I started, you know, okay, I'm just going to walk to the office. And sometimes that wouldn't even work. So then it was really turning to my supervisor. And I just think bringing in, kind of like what you said, bringing in other people in the office to help only when they're really needed. Like try to take care of it yourself first and do your best. And if it doesn't, then that's when you kind of turn to your supervisor. So not maybe turning to them right away, like, can you put out this fire for me? Or like, I'm too scared to like go and confront them. Like, do what you need to do, and if it's still not working, then you go there. But that was just kind of a consistent thing that I hated every month, and it was stressful for me, so I don't know. Um, for me, it was trying to work with people from all over the world because although you're going to one specific country, the chances are you'll probably be working with kids from other countries as well. Um, one of the stressful situations I was in, I was working in Ireland um, for one company and their customer was German and the other half of their customer was from England. So I had to set up a meeting and I was trying to balance the Irish side of they could do anything but they just wouldn't give a due date and the Germans wanted an exact due date to the minute to the second of when this was going to be done. And so I was trying to get input from both sides, and it was just impossible to match up sides. So when you're dealing with different cultures, you kind of really have to find the middle ground and try to just find something that's going to work because nine times out of ten, there's going to be a clash there, and it could go back 200 years of why they don't see eye to eye. And you just have to find something that works for 30 minutes and then get out of there as soon as possible. So I think like right now we're going to transition to takeaways or, I guess, things that you, if you could give any kind of advice, kind of for our MISP participants. So the question is, um, what was the most useful action you took to prepare for your international internship? Um, I mean, I feel like you can do a lot to prepare, but it's not actually going to prepare you for much. Um, 
it's really just like your first few days there, soak everything in as much as you can, and that's what's going to prepare you for the rest of the time that you're there. Um, I mean, I mentioned my de delegation workshops beforehand, and that those were really helpful because they gave um, a lot of context that you needed to know to understand the people. Um, just history things and um, a lot of just cultural things to expect, but even with that, um, I think I still needed to be there to fully understand anything. And so um, I think just kind of sitting back like your first couple days and just really absorbing everything, um, that was the most preparation that I think I could do. And it wasn't, there's not a lot you can do right before you leave, it's once you get there. I would definitely agree with that. I think you can try to prepare yourself, but you don't really know what it's going to be like until you get there. And I think it's important to like do a little research, obviously, of, like where you're going to be working, like what their values are, like what kind of company or organization it is, um, because I think that's really important. But again, like right when you get there is really when you're going to um, know what it's going to be like. Um, one of the things I wish I was like more prepared of, like the, all the people I worked with kept like wanting to talk about like things in the U.S. and like current events, and I just was not. I was like, kind of like surprised by it, and um, some of the things I didn't know, and I kind of felt like I should. They were things I should know. Um, so that's just a random like thing that like people will want will be interested in knowing about like the U.S. and like what like what your school is like and just random like current events that are going on and like what your opinions are on them. Mm -hmm. At least that's what I encountered um, with the other interns and sometimes I was just like I don't know and then I just felt like I should know. Mm -hmm. that's, you, you mentioned it's, it's a random thing but it's also it's really really important. I think a lot of you will find when you go into your, your host country cultures that a lot of the people there they, they might know more about uh, U.S. history, our current events, than you do. And so uh, you have to really prepare yourself for that. So as much as it's important to learn more about your host country, your host city, or the place that you're going to be working, um, I think all of us would probably agree that it's also really important to make sure that you're keeping track of what's going on in the U.S. or wherever your home country is before you go. Yeah. Good point, Allison. definitely echo openness um, and I had actually I'd studied in India before so I think when I was going I wasn't really necessarily worried about that maybe I came in with a false sense of com confidence that oh because I've been in India before this adjustment won't be hard for me and I think because it not only was it a very different city but it, sh it was just an like entirely different context and um, and so I think Again, um, you know, back to my earlier struggles of, you know, this was a lot of responsibility, not knowing what I was doing. Once I became open and was kind of just absorbing things and just, you know, took that position, it really helped me. And I feel like if I had come in like that, I wouldn't have, that, I wouldn't have had as many challenges initially as I did. Um. The biggest thing is that most of the time you'll be doing something you've never done before and a lot of it is just getting yourself outside your comfort zone. So it's really hard to prepare for one specific situation, but if you can beforehand or even when you first get to the country, try to do things that you know you might not normally do just because in the work environment it's going to be something new to you also, but the more comfortable you are working outside of your comfort zone it will help tremendously. Um, a bit of an example was kind of by accident, but I fell asleep on a train and I woke up on the wrong side of Germany one morning. <laughs> well, actually, I woke up at midnight in Berlin and I was supposed to be about halfway in between Berlin and the other side of the country. Oh, no. So I ended up sleeping on a park bench, and when I got home the next morning, I just kind of laughed about it because here I was sleeping on a park bench in the middle of Germany, and everything was okay. So then after that, I didn't really think there could be any more challenges after I survived that. <laughs> so that's a extreme example of kind of putting yourself out there, but... I mean, once you get through things like that, you kind of look back and say, okay, that wasn't so bad, so why am I worried about these little things that I have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis? And you guys have kind of, or some of you already touched on this, but what is one thing or some things that you wish you would have known before going into your experience? So that, maybe coupled with any tips that you might have for all these folks, so some have been abroad before, some have not been abroad before, so. 
What do you wish you would have known? What do you wish you would have done to prepare? What are some tips? Um, I can start. Um, I would say the, I think this is the social worker coming out in me, but the importance of so, uh, self-care, um, especially when you're going to a different country for a job and um, or an internship. Um, because, you know, there is a level of responsibility there. You know, you're not necessarily going for a study abroad program, which, you know, it's arguable, depending on the program, how challenging, you know, the studies actually are compared to the leisure time. So really still keeping at heart um, balance and knowing what relaxes you um, before you go, what things you enjoy, and making sure that you at least have a few of those things like in place and ready that you can kind of turn to when you're in a stressful moment. And it might not even be with your internship, it might just be homesickness, it might be, you know, a feeling of, one, you know, isolation for a few days. Just like having something to turn to that will kind of relax you and um, do that. And I like kind of was a slow learner on that, so I feel like sometimes I stress myself out before I really start, like halfway through, then I got the hang of it. <coughs> um, I would just say, again, like I really was like baffled about the timing in Spain, and I got to my first day of work at like 8.30 and no one got there till like 9.30, so I was just like waiting, I was like, hmm, this is weird, but they didn't get there till like 9.30, and then I was done at like 2.30 or 3, and I thought I was going to be there till 5. Um, so that was just like, I that's something I probably should have been aware of before I got there. Um, and again, like the flexibility and like um, openness, and like be, like go out of your comfort zone, as he said too, like that's the best way to learn, I think, and like I wish, not necessarily before I got there, but like right when I got there I had started exploring more because I kind of didn't really like go out on my own right away because um, I knew some people or like one other girl and so I didn't really like explore even like my neighborhood right away and like towards the end I would I, like just found things that I had never found before and I only had like a couple weeks left so um, definitely just go and like really appreciate where you are and do whatever you can while you're there because it'll be over really fast. Um, yeah, the one thing to add to that is don't take your time there for granted. A lot of times you'll say, well, I have six weeks here, I can go do that at the end of the time. And then you have one week on left and you're trying to fit in three weeks of activities into the last two days. Um, always try to be busy doing something. Uh, sometimes it's hard to let go of things at home, but while you're abroad, try to let go as much as you can and enjoy the experience for what it is. Um, the other thing, just from being prepared, take two debit cards, leave one at home and leave one on you. <laughs> Just always have some sort of backup because accidents happen when you travel and you never want to be stranded there for a couple of days before your parents can send you a new card or before you get access to funds. Just, you know, don't plan for the worst, but always have a backup plan. Yeah, I mean, kind of along with that, I guess this isn't like what I wish I would have known, but just like explore the country that you're in. Like wherever you're going to go is probably extremely interesting, it's extremely fun, it's really cool just if you have travel time if you have any time to go do anything just do it I and mean, even if you have a couple hours one day like Allison was saying just walk around mm -hmm. explore where you're at because um, when I went I did work for four weeks and I ended up staying for an extra week and I just traveled with one other person around the country for the week and it was amazing and every weekend we would go on a trip and um, go to a different part of the country and basically all the places that I wanted to see that we didn't get to go those weekends, I stayed for an extra week and just did it. And it was amazing. I mean, I got to see a lot of this country. I mean, and I mean, it was beautiful. It was so much fun. And um, so just really do that if you have the opportunity because you'll see some really cool things, meet really awesome people. Um, it's a good experience. Um, I just want to add one other thing that I think um, it's really useful is if you can like meet some local people yeah. is literally the best way to find like the hidden the hidden things you can do in the city and they'll give you such a, a different perspective than being a tourist even if you aren't a tourist because you're living there you still at least I kind of felt like one at first um, and that's like a like, good way to get to know someone there and they really have a unique perspective that you can really learn from so utilize that. I thought of one more thing that maybe it's not quite as <coughs> deep and insightful as what you guys are talking about right now, but I, it's come up in this workshop before. 
and then it relates to just kind of preparing for the workplace that you're entering, whether it's a volunteer experience or an internship. Um, that would be clothing, like what you're actually going to be wearing in the workplace. I mean, I've heard stories of um, interns from U of M bringing, you know, all business suits or really formal attire to their internship, and they, they got to the, the site and, and saw that people were actually quite casual wearing jeans, and they had to go out and buy all new clothing, and maybe vice versa happens sometimes. So that's just another thing to kind of just piggyback off of what Allison said with like looking look a little bit more into your workplace, try to get a feel for the workplace culture. Um, if you don't yet have contact with like a supervisor, certainly if you're going through like a placement program or something like that, that would be an appropriate question to ask them. They can help you find out if you're unable to glean that from the website of the, the organization or the, the company that you're working for. So that could also save you some money so <laughs> that you don't have to go buy a whole new wardrobe when you arrive in country. So that's a any other things like that that y'all have to throw out <coughs> before we do questions and breakout groups? Whatever you think you need to take, it's too much. And you're yeah. going to end up sitting there with stuff <laughs> in your suitcase that you never touched or saw in the six weeks you were there. And then you're going to end up having to leave stuff behind because it won't fit in your suitcase to come home. And you have souvenirs and all the stuff you bought while you're there. So yeah, whatever you think you need, just take two or three things out. I would also say pack at least, depending where you go. I think like at least when I studied abroad in India, I don't, I don't know, I just did not put a lot of thought into what I packed, and I did not pack like nice, cute clothes. And for me, like that was the biggest thing I regretted like once I was there, because people dress, you know, I don't know, it was like especially going yeah. to a nice restaurant, and I'm like, ugh. And so yeah, just bring things that you actually like clothing-wise, and I don't know, I think I wanted to be a hippie secretly or something, because that's what I brought. Nothing wrong with that. But, 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 like, I, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. I mean, we are the workplace and then like your social aspect of it are going to be two different wardrobes. And yeah. I was not prepared for that. I don't think out of us were when we went to Nicaragua because we were told wear t shirts, wear long skirts, long pants, you know, like be dressed very conservatively, which is appropriate for the school and the clinic. And when you're walking around, the community, but when you go and dan go dancing at night at the club, you're not going to be wearing a frumpy old skirt. Like, and that's all I had, pretty much. So we, we bought new clothes while we were there, just so we could go out to the clubs and to the bars. And I mean, it was fun. <laughs> but yeah, bring things that you like, because most likely you'll get to wear them. <laughs> So before we go to breakout groups, because I, I know that um, our, one, another one of our guests has arrived to help facilitate a little breakout group, but um, before we do that, I did want to give you guys uh, the opportunity to ask questions for our panel, um, whether you have a question for one specific person or a question that you'd like them all to address, um, by all means. Does anyone have any questions? Specific to the, it can be the countries that they went to or how they overcame whatever. No questions? Okay. Well then, I think at this point we will do the breakout groups, and they're, they're meant to be very informal. Um, and we, we unfortunately, we don't have someone to represent every single country that y'all are going to, so we're, we're going to maybe kind of have to get a little bit creative and kind of group together a little bit. Um, I know uh, another one of our guests, Ashley, walked in, I think. Are you still there? Hi, Ashley. So um, Ashley is from South Korea, is that correct? Great, and um, we have uh, two students here who are going to South Korea, so um, we've asked Ashley to come and <coughs> talk a little bit more about workplace culture and cultural differences, and every single person up here will also be leading an informal breakout group. So I guess if you guys maybe kind of want to self-identify or, or group yourself into one of these breakout groups, and if you don't feel like one relates to you, um, then you are, of course, free to go, but we hope that you will stay. And on the back of your agenda, um, we have a list of topics. I doubt we're going to get through all these topics, but these are just some uh, suggested topics for the breakout group facilitators to go through and comparing the culture here in Ann Arbor, here in the U.S., to what one might find um, in a workplace in country X. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing. Um, yeah, is forget. Else. And if you do leave, please be sure to sign in, or be sure that you sign in so that we know you are here. Um, but yeah, so I guess we'll, we'll have maybe a few groups meet in here. We can have some groups meet in our, our office or in the lobby area. So, um, so group leaders, if you kind of want to 
Yeah, you guys can be together. Cool. Uh, so we have we have Central America here, Nicaragua, yeah. Honduras, yeah. 